So a lot of you are already aware of my very intense color blindness. Yep, that's right. I'm a cinematographer with eyeballs that suffer from hue perception. So my particular case of color blindness is very rare, but also very intense. My eye doctor even mentioned that it's one of the worst cases that she has ever seen. So this is a big issue, not just for lighting, but also on the post-production side as well. When I jump into DaVinci, I basically just have to stay away from anything that adjusts the hue because I just can't see what it's actually doing. So what I have is called strong Dutton color blindness, and it is a type of red-green color blind. So basically what it means is that the green cones in my eyeballs detect too much red light and not enough green light. So when you first hear that, you may think like, oh, he just sees a bunch of red, but that's not entirely true. Um, basically reds and greens are kind of clumped all in one. And basically, I guess the green cones, because they can't really detect green, they try to overcompensate. So this is a big issue, specifically with us being camera guys, as you know, like all of our chargers, when they're charging, it's red. And when it's done charging, it's green. Well, the problem is, is I can never tell what color it is. Yeah, I have no idea what color those are right now, but uh, last Christmas, my wife picked these up for me. Uh, these are made by a company called Pile Stone, and they are claiming to be the colorblind experts, but they're just some interesting kind of uh, glasses. So, <laughs> but they actually do help uh, with these bright LED lights. Because to my eye right now, this one looks red and this one looks green. I think. I think. And this is the thing, is that I'm constantly second-guessing myself. Because telling red and green apart from each other is uh, pretty much impossible. <laughs> so yeah, it's a big conundrum outside of filmmaking as well as just everyday life. However, the biggest bummer in terms of cinematography is because the primary colors for filmmaking are blue, red, and green. Now, I believe this video is going to be way more helpful to a lot of people because colorblindness actually affects a lot of folks. In fact, the latest statistic is that 300 million people suffer from some sort of colorblindness. Now, obviously, all different cases are different and some much more severe than others, but actually this is something very common for men. At the end of the day, the biggest bummer for my particular situation is it really limits my creativity in terms of what I can do in the color grade. Because what may look really cool to my eyeballs is very possibly going to look quite odd to a lot of folks. And where I run into the biggest problems is skin tones, because I cannot tell when it's really red and the flip side to that is I cannot detect green at all. Something else I found really interesting that was brought to my attention is that the director of Drive, Nicholas Reffin, is also colorblind and he cannot distinguish midtones. And his films are always heavily saturated because of this. And I found that really interesting because his films are some of my favorite movies. And I think it has a lot to do just with how I perceive color. Now for jobs that I'm hired to be the DP on and the stakes are really, really high, I've adopted uh, some certain tools and practices into my workflow to help me with my colorblind issues. So first, the easiest one is having access to a monitor that has a solid vector scope and RGB parade. And with those tools, I don't necessarily need to see certain colors to see what's going on. I just need to know where the values are landing on those particular scopes. But as you can imagine, those two tools can only carry me so far. My most loyal piece of kit is this Cinemeter 2 app with the Luxie For All lighting dome. Now back in the day before I bought my Siconic Lightmaster Pro, this was my poor man's light meter, but it's also been my poor man's color meter because a Siconic color meter is going to run you around two grand, whereas something like this Cinemeter 2 app with the Luxie For All dome is like 50 bucks. And it's actually a really good tool that a lot of respected ASC members have confirmed its accuracy. You calibrate to your light meter, your trusted calibrated light meter, and to your color meter, and it then gives you extremely accurate readings if you put this Luxie ball on. The trick is you must calibrate the app. And the calibration process is actually really simple to do. In fact, within the settings in the app, Adam Wilt, the creator, walks you through it step by step. However, my process is a little different, kind of like a hybrid situation. So I'm gonna give you an overview of how I calibrate the app now. 
and the way I do it isn't totally different, I just add a little step at the end. First thing you will need is a tungsten light bulb. A real tungsten bulb, not an LED bulb, but a tungsten bulb that you can pick up from somewhere like your local hardware store. Now, the way that Adam walks you through the calibration process, you literally only need the tungsten bulb and the Luxie Dome. But better yet, if you don't have the Luxie Dome, you could just use a little piece of 216 diffusion gel. But now for the way I do it, you will also need a gray card because I actually calibrate the app to my camera. Because I'm always hired with my own camera, it just made sense for me to calibrate the app to that specific sensor. But either way, no matter how you calibrate it, it's still going to be relatively similar. Because no matter what kind of color meter you're using, they're always going to be somewhat different, but generally they're still within a couple hundred degrees of each other. So once you have your tungsten bulb, that's literally the only light source you want on in the room for the calibration process. Then just pop the Luxie Dome on over your phone's camera lens. Now it's up to you if you want to calibrate the phone's front camera or the back camera or even both. Now for me, I just found it easier and simpler to use the front camera. So in this video, it's all about the front camera. But don't worry, there's no difference for each. You still literally calibrate them the same way. One thing you do wanna make sure of is that you are calibrating for the Luxie Dome. So you'll notice here that when you cycle through the camera modes within the app, there's actually four different modes. There's front camera, then front camera with Luxie, then back camera, then back camera with Luxie. Now, if you plan on using the app as a light meter as well, you're probably gonna wanna calibrate all four modes because the Luxie mode is for incident readings and the non-Luxie mode is for spot metering. However, in today's video, we are not going to be calibrating the app to be used as a light meter because I've already done videos on that in the past. There'll be links down below. Today's video is specifically for calibrating the app for color metering. So for using the app as a color meter, you will need it to be in incident mode. And you'll know it's in incident mode because you'll see the big Luxie logo on the front of the screen. Now, once you are in incident mode and you have the Luxie Dome on, you'll notice that on the right side of the screen where the waveform is, you'll see the CCT readings along with the tint value. You'll also notice that it will say uncalibrated. Now, mine no longer says uncalibrated here today because, well, I've already calibrated it. So if you tap and hold on the CCT reading, you'll see the color calibration menu pop up on the bottom of the screen. And now you can set the color temperature to match your tungsten bulb. This is why it's so important that you're using a real tungsten bulb because a tungsten bulb is going to be way more accurate than any random LED fixture. Also in this calibration menu is where you can adjust the tint gain. However, Adam does recommend just leaving that at 100. However, when it comes to the tint, something I've noticed is that if you look on the left side of the screen here, you'll see the iPhone's readings for white balance and tint as well. And that's actually pretty dang accurate. So here's where I take the calibration process to the next level. So under that same lighting setup with the tungsten bulb, I set up a gray card. And then I take my camera, for this demo, it's the red Komodo, and I fill the Komodo screen with that gray card. And then I go into the Komodo's menu and do an auto white balance under the tungsten lighting. Now, before I program the Cinemeter 2 app, the most important step when doing this is you must keep the Luxie Dome in the exact same spot of the gray card while doing the calibration. If you're holding your phone somewhere else other than where the camera took its reading at, your calibration will be off. So then I take the numbers from the Komodo, both the color temperature and the tint values, and I dial those same exact numbers into the Cinemeter's calibration menu. And again, while I'm doing this, I'm holding the phone in the exact same spot as that gray card. And then it's good to go. Now, if you wanted to take your calibration to an even bigger level, you could rent a Sekonic SpectroMaster and calibrate the Cinemeter 2 app next to one of those. In fact, I did pick up a Sekonic color meter off of ShareGrid for the day, not just to have 100% color accuracy, but also just to test and compare the two meters for myself. So here's a quick little snippet on those results. Since I only have this bad boy for a day, I thought it would be fun to also just compare it. Now that I have it, uh, calibrated next to the Cinemeter app, um, I thought it'd be really cool to see how well the Cinemeter keeps up with the $2,000 Siconic, uh, just in terms of consistency, and especially for someone like me that suffers from a pretty hardcore red-green colorblind. 
uh, it's pretty quick to see after messing around with this bad boy how advantageous it could be because not only is it for color temperature and tint values but also I can go in here and I can pull up a CRI tablet and I can take CRI readings of all the lights as well as I can also go into the menu and look at this white balance correction menu and this brings up the green magenta grid. And this is a way easier way for me to instantly see tint values because sometimes just reading the normal tint readings can be a tad confusing sometimes uh, when you're just looking at uh, decimals and things of that nature. I'm first going to take a reading just inside of the book light just to see, uh, well, you know, just to see how good this Godox SZ150R really is. I have it set on the back here at 5600 Kelvin. And here on the SpectroMaster, we can see that um, the actual reading of it when it's at 5600 is actually uh, 5394. So we'll just call it 5400. So that's pretty dang good. It's only a couple hundred degrees off. That's pretty typical. Uh, it does have a little bit of a slight uh, green shift. So if I go here to the white balance corrector, Ah, see, I don't even know how to read the decimals. This is just another great reason to have this tool. Here you can see it's leaning more towards the magenta side. Not a lot, uh, but uh, I don't know, quite a bit. As you can see, it's way over here. So the cool thing about the SZ150R is it does have green magenta shift, so I could uh, dial that in on the back of the unit or within the app. Let's take it another level and let's check the CRI values of this bad boy. Um, because we also have that option with the Spectrum Master as well. So yeah, there we're getting a reading of 96.5 for the color rendering index. So that's not too bad, all things considered. Now we'll see what the Cinemeter 2 app does. So I screenshotted the reading we were getting, and there you'll see that the Cinemeter 2, even after I calibrated it, it is still, um, wow, it's off by quite a bit. Definitely more than a few hundred, right? Uh, the, the, the Spectrum Master was sitting around between 54 and 5500, and this thing is all the way down at 4840. So that is a bit of a bummer looking at that, even after I calibrated it to the actual Siconic. Uh, a couple hundred degrees is okay, but this is nearly a thousand degrees difference. So you definitely start to see what you're paying that a uh, couple grand for. So now there's no lights on. I just opened up the big uh, sliding glass door here and I'm being completely lit by the outside world. So now uh, let's compare the Spectrum Master to the Cinemeter when we're in the outside world here. Um, here we go. I'm gonna take a reading on this. And there we go. It is 49.58 from uh, just natural daylight coming in the window right there. 48.40, 48.50. Wow, so it does really well with tungsten lighting uh, being consistent, obviously with the Spectrum Master because that's what we calibrated it to, uh, but it also is fairly close with this natural daylight. For whatever reason, when uh, you know comparing it with the Godox light, it was off by a thousand degrees. That is really interesting. Um, something with the way that it's interpreting the you know artificial LED light because this app just works off of the iPhone sensor. So yeah, I mean the sensors in this thing, you know, you're talking about a two thousand dollar sensor versus I don't know however much the iPhone 11 is, but also this device was literally designed to read color, right? Uh, whereas this is just a phone with an app, right? So. Uh, man, uh, I'm really digging this thing. Uh, hopefully one day I can have my own, uh, but yeah, it was cool just to rent it for the day. Now, when do I use this color meter? Well, for me, it's most important when setting the key light. For instance, if I'm using a newer fixture, like my favorite one right now, the Nanlite Mix Panel 150, it's really simple to dial in both the color temperature and the green magenta shift while reading off of the app. Quick side note, I've done a full review of that Nanlite Mix Panel 150. It's definitely my workhorse panel. It's comparable to a SkyPanel S60. So if you haven't seen that review, I highly encourage you to check that light out. I'll leave a link down below. But now if you're using an older fixture, say something like the Aperture 120D Mark I, uh, or a light that does not have tint control nor is bicolor, then I can still use the Cinemeter to tell me what gels I need to put on the light. Because there's another cool option within the app. So if I tap on the CCT reading, a menu pops up on the bottom of the screen that allows me to set my target color temperature. And the app even tells me what gels I would need to achieve that target color temp, but also what gels I would need to correct for the green magenta shift. 
Now, the final piece of gear that is really crucial for me, especially in terms of skin tones, is this X-Rite Color Checker Passport for video. And this one is really wonderful because the color chip chart is already integrated within the DaVinci Resolve software, and you still have an option for gray card as well. And what I really enjoy about this one is not only is it super thin and light, but it's also super durable. The tricky part is you have to remember to actually use it. Because the cool thing is you really only need a little five second clip of the chip chart underneath every lighting setup. However, that's easier said than done, but one simple way to ensure that you use it every time is to just simply hold it next to the slate. And keep in mind, you don't need to flash it on screen for every single take. You just need it for each individual lighting setup. So those are some items that I have used and adopted into my workflow just to ensure for color accuracy, but certainly everyone can benefit from using these simple tools. And in fact, most productions do have some sort of color chip chart on set. I know that Shane Hrobit uses his all the time. Also, most high-level DPs do own and use color meters on set. And actually, as of late, I've noticed that DPs and gaffers use their color meters way more than their light meters. So now I'm sure the question is, okay, Justin, why do most of your videos still look nuts? And the first simple answer to that is, quite honestly, I don't always remember to use all of these tools. I think it's important to reiterate the fact that I use the YouTube platform literally just as a straight up vlog. And it just happened to evolve into what it is now where I happen to do gear reviews and it's kind of turned into an educational resource for my fellow filmmakers. So meanwhile, the jobs that I'm hired to do and get paid to be the cinematographer on, those jobs obviously get my full attention and 150% of my energy because, well, it's my livelihood. <laughs> So I hope that this video clears the air when it comes to the color and look of some of my videos here on the YouTube channel, but also I actually really do help that these tools help people as well. I'll have links down below to these products so you can check it all out for yourselves. And if you're a fan of the channel or me, there's lots of different ways to show your support. The biggest and strongest one being the Dog Times Patreon. And, and that is an excellent resource for anyone pursuing freelance cinematography. Again, links down below. But of course, the easiest and cheapest way to support the channel is to just simply tap that subscribe button. And for now, that is a wrap.